Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies along with some extra goodies. This red quill, Parachute Isonychia, is a great little dry fly that can almost be considered a universal attractor pattern, much like the Parachute Adams. Before you start tying, place a few of the brown strip quills into a warm water bath and allow them to soak for at least 10 minutes. This will make them much more supple and less likely to split when wrapped. Begin by getting the size 16 hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. Then load a bobbin with a spool of tan unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank, leaving an eye length space behind the hook eye, and take a dozen or so wraps rearward before snipping off the tag. The parachute post of the fly is made of white zelon. Snip an inch long segment from the strand, then split that segment in half lengthwise. This will be enough to make two flies. Pinch one of the halves in the fingertips of your left hand and place it on top of the hook shank. Start taking wraps with your tying thread to bind the material down, forward to the initial tie-in point, then back to where you snipped off the tag. Reach in with your tying scissors and snip the excess material off at a shallow angle, so when you take wraps of tying thread over top of it, you end up with a smooth ramp down to the hook shank. Strung brown hackle is used for the tail of the fly. Preen 20 or so fibers down, perpendicular to the stem, and while keeping their tips aligned, strip them free. Pass the butt ends to your right hand, still doing your best to keep those tips aligned. Measure to form a tail, a hook shank in length, then transfer that measurement rearward to the start of the hook bend. Take wraps of tying thread all the way to the start of the bend to bind the fibers to the top of the hook shank. You can then lift the butt ends up to vertical and snip them off close. Retrieve one of the moistened quills from the water bath and blot it dry with a paper towel. Snip off the very tip end that still has some fibers, then lay that end against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it, once again all the way back to the start of the hook bend. Then relocate your tying thread to a short distance behind the base of the post. Begin making touching wraps with the quill forward, up the hook, toward the eye. These wraps should form a good-looking segmented body on the fly. If the quill splits, it needed to soak longer in the water bath. When you reach your tying thread, use it to anchor the butt end of the quill to the top of the hook shank, then reach in with your tying scissors and snip the excess off close. Pull the post material back and take jam wraps in front of it to hold it back. Then, start taking thread wraps around and up the post for about an eighth of an inch then take wraps back down. This should stiffen and compress the base of the post significantly. Take a few more wraps in front of the post, leaving your thread a short distance behind the hook eye. Select one of the brown hackle feathers. They're the ones with the shorter fibers. With the dull or back side of the feather facing you, strip a quarter inch or so of fibers off both sides of the stem. Lay the bare stem against the near side of the hook and take thread wraps to secure it, first back to the post, then up the post, all the way to the top of your thread wraps. Then return your tying thread down to the hook behind the post. Tease just the smallest amount of tan dubbing free from the packet and use it to create a very slender, one inch long dubbing noodle on your tying thread. Start taking wraps with the noodle, first behind the post, then in front of it, to build up a slightly enlarged thorax on the fly. End by bringing your tying thread around the back of the post and leaving it in front of it. Get hold of the hackle feather and bend it down perpendicular to the post, then start making clockwise wraps with it around the post. Four to five turns should be plenty. Make two or three flat wraps around the base of the post with your tying thread to firmly anchor the hackle. Once the hackle's secured, use your tying scissors to snip the post off so it's about a hook gap in length. Reach in with the very tips of your tying scissors and snip the excess hackle off close. Pick up your whip finish tool and perform a three or four turn whip finish around the base of the post to secure your tying thread. Then seat the knot well and snip the thread off close. 
and that's about it. You can add a drop of head cement to the final whip finish and the quill body of the fly to increase durability, if you like.